Welcome to CLA 215, Sociology of Communication, Study Session 2, Meaning of Society. Introduction. Having discussed the meaning, elements, and nature of human communication in a preceding study session, we now move to a step. We now move a step further in this study session by examining the basis of society. To do this, we shall use the perspectives of two schools of thought. They are A. The structural functionalism and B. The symbolic interactionism. Our knowledge of the concept will prepare us well for our subsequent discussions concerning the relevance of communication in the social group called society. Learning outcome. When you have studied this session, you should be able to 1. Explain the meaning of society 2. Identify different layers of the Nigerian society from the geographical perspectives and 3. Discuss the schools of thought on the root of the society Definition of society Society is a collection of people living together in an organized way within a defined boundary. Society, as Dara Muller describes it, is the web of social relationships. The whole complex scheme or whole tissue of social relationships. Citing Jeff Simmel and Ralph Linton, Dara Muller further describes society as a number of individuals connected by interaction or any group of people who have lived and worked together long enough to think of themselves as a social unit with well-defined limits. From the foregoing definitions, we could observe that society is a union of people who live together and interact within a common boundary. The boundary may be social that is, such as human societies, or geographical, such as the Nigerian society. If we use the social boundary, society can be further categorized into religious societies, ethnic society, professional societies, that is, society of engineers, and so on. A society is different from a community because Community is more closely knit than the society. That is, within a society, we can have a number of communities, units of people who share more proximate cultural or social identities. Strata of geographical society. In this session, we focus on the big geographical society known as the Nigerian society. The Nigerian society, if viewed, from the geographical perspective, has three layers. There are the rural, urban, and semi-urban or peripheral layers. Let us discuss this strata and see how each of the strata is unique. The rural society. Most Nigerians inhabit the rural layer. About 70% of Nigerians live in rural areas. Moimeka 2009. Rural Nigerians are friendly and hospitable. They are able to spend time with other people and cultivate true relationships because their time is not gov governed by street schedules and the trappings of the society do not affect them. They are very important to the survival of the country because they produce nearly all the food consumed in the country, yet they are the poorest and the most neglected in this country. They are mostly illiterate. They lack basic amenities such as pipe and water, hospitals, electricity, and good roads. Poverty in rural Nigeria is severe. The saddest part of the story is that the children of these poor rural people of today also have the tendency to become the poor rural people of tomorrow. There is no strategy mapped out by government 
to break the poverty chain. Health problems in rural Nigeria are worse than they are in the urban areas. Number one, the media of mass communication do not pay attention to the rural people. This is a result of many reasons. Most media houses are located in the cities and so they cater to the interest of the urban people. Number two, advertisers focus on consumers. Most consumers of modern products are found in the urban areas. Therefore, advertisers want to sponsor media programs that appeal to these urban consumers. Take chocolate drink, which we wrongly call tea, as an example. Most rural people do not take chocolate or tea or coffee. Why then will a chocolate company sponsor a program targeted at rural people? Number three, most media personnel are urban based and urban trained. They are not qualified to tell the stories of the rural people. Therefore, rural people are neglected. Number four, for reasons of stated by government, it has refused to approve the establishment of community radio stations in Nigeria. A community radio is a non-profit station owned, staffed and run by the community people. Because there are no community radio stations in Nigeria, the rural people do not have access to the broadcast media as active message makers. They are mere passive message consumers. The conventional radio system in Nigeria is highly elitist and urban-centered. In terms of program contents and mode of delivery, the grassroots are alienated. The languages, identity, needs, and hope are neither recognized nor protected by radio in Nigeria. The coming of mobile telephone, specifically the GSM in Nigeria in 2000, has remarkably bridged the gap between the rural dwellers and others in terms of the difference in the tele density. Many rural communities now have access to GSM. However, the difference between the rural and other areas in terms of tele density has not been completely removed. Many rural communities in Nigeria still do not have telephone signals. For communication, Rural Nigerians depend on traditional methods of communication, such as town crier and symbols. They also depend on newspapers from the cities. Where rural newspapers exist, many are written in English, which is alien to most rural people. The ferry ferry. The ferry ferry or the suburban people are those who reside in areas that are not clearly urban or clearly rural. This category of people also includes squatters in urban areas and slum dwellers. Most of these people have been lured by the promising glitter of city life. When they reach the city, they become completely disillusioned because what imagined before coming to the city are not actually there. The dreamed glitters are a mere mirage. Having settled in the city or areas close to the city, they act out a living there, doing many jobs. They have a high tendency to get involved in illegalities. These people are poor. They live in squalors and are largely illiterate. Their poverty may also be intergenerational. The urban. The urban Nigeria is made up of the upper class rich people, highly formally educated. They have social amenities, even if these are not adequate, such as electricity, water, pipe bone, or dug out well. A large portion of the nation's resources is spent on maintaining these people. Though they have these amenities, their lives are not without problems. Incidence of crime is higher in urban areas than in rural areas. Most houses are walled to the sky. 
and many communities within the urban areas are catered. Not only this, they do not have the neighborliness and brothers keepers mentality of the rural people. Life in urban Nigeria can be busy, choked, and even lonely. Hair and noise pollutions are common urban problems. Because of air pollution, certain lung diseases are more rampant in urban areas than rural. Due to noise pollution, urban dwellers have more decibel losses than the rural dwellers. They tend to have more hearing problems. They may also suffer from intentional progressive deafness, that is, growing unresponsiveness or intensity to noise and sound. Urban dwellers have access to all forms of modern communication internet, satellite, newspapers, television, and radio can afford recharge cars to call friends and family, and they may be very current. But this access has not tended to contribute to civic engagement. Many urban dwellers are apathetic to community projects and even politics. Not only this, the access may have also contributed to withdrawal from interpersonal interaction and interpersonal communication. Still on communication in urban areas, urban dwellers are likely to suffer from information overload because there is information coming from too many channels. They are likely to get overwhelmed and submerged in the pool of information. The root of society. In our attempt to explain what constitutes society, what makes society possible, or how human society operates, we shall consider two schools of thought. These schools of thought are 1. The structural functionalism perspective, 2. The symbolic interactionism perspective. Taramala 2005. Let us discuss these two perspectives. The structural functionalism. The structural functionalist believe that the core ingredients of human society are the structural elements such as roles, status, rules, institutions, languages, and general systems of thought control, e.g. constitution, regulation. In the opinion of this school of thought, human society is possible because individuals acquire and internalize the norms, values, and morals that get acceptable conduct within the social setting. Through the process of socialization, members of a human society acquire these social norms and values and become acceptable members of the society. When members acquire these values, the individuals become self-regulating or self-writing persons and voluntarily perform the roles expected of them in acceptable manners. As long as members of a social group imbibe these values through socialization, society will continue to exist, function and transit from one generation to another. On the other hand, a human society will cease to exist as an orderly social structure as soon as members fail to acquire the structural elements we have already identified. Talcott Parsons is one of the notable proponents of structural functionalism as a school of thought to explain the basis of society. Taramola, 2005 the symbolic interactionism. This school of thought believes that human society is possible because members interact, transact, and form relationships among themselves. What defines or constitutes society is what members of the society bring to it in terms of their interaction and relationship. Through these social interactions, Society becomes a cooperative entity 
a sustained moral and social order. According to the leading proponents of this school of thought, George Abbott Mead, Taramala 2005, society will continue to exist as long as its members continue to interact, transact, and perform their civic responsibilities. This means that society is anchored on the framework of meaningful social interactions among individuals, groups, organizations, or institutions that constitute the society. It is through these social interactions that people exchange ideas, knowledge, thoughts, feelings, emotions, experiences, and information. This is communication, a social act that is performed through language, signs, gestures, and other symbol-related processes. Therefore, communication in the view of the symbolic interactionism school of thought is the core element of society. Unless people communicate, that is, interact socially, society is impossible. This is because it is through communication that new knowledge, ideas, values, norms, and morals are transferred from one generation to another. In essence, without communication, that is interaction, socialization is not possible. And without socialization, society cannot sustain itself. Study Session Summary In this study section, we have discussed the concept of society as a unit of social relationships or interactions among people of a common boundary. The common boundary or limit may be social or geographical. We have also identified and explained the geographical strata of the Nigerian society. These strata are the rural, peripheral, and the urban layers. We further identified and discussed two schools of thought from whose perspective we can explain how society is possible. These schools of thought are the structural functionalism perspective and the symbolic interactionism perspective. End of study session 2. Thanks for listening.